And we are back for the final segment here on Home Track Heroes Figure 8 Nationals out here at Evergreen Speedway tonight. And uh, as you can see, 43 laps to go. There's a great shot of Ricky the Kid Deets. You know, I was looking at the points in the uh, Outlaw Figure 8 and very happy to see Zach Larson coming into the event. Uh, tonight is your points leader by a slim, slim three-point margin over the 676 of Ricky Dietz. And then we go five points back to John Carlson, Nick Gunderson, and Ryan Clark make up the top five. But, man, Zach Larson, who is just such a picture of consistency, it's good to see him up at the top. Well, and you mentioned, you know, Larson, the leader. Dietz only back three points. Third place, John Carlson back just eight points. Yeah. So, you know, you go all the way back to Nick Gunderson, fourth, 27 points. This is going to change a lot tonight, and you're going to see these positions swap out before this year is over. Um, and it, it is, the champion could come out from the fifth spot. Even. Yeah, it, it's it's this is going to be a fun one to watch. So, John uh, Carl. Uh, John Peterson given an indication, it looks like the 71 of Holton with some issues. There's a little bit of smoke coming out the back end of uh, Nick Holton's car. Brought to you by Northwest Adventure Rentals. This segment is brought to you by Sparkle Wash of Puget Sound. They're your source for residential and commercial power washing services for over 55 years. Their technicians can handle it all. No project is too big or too small. Log on to sparklewash.com and schedule a complimentary quote. Sparkle wash of Puget Sound. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks to all of the people that have gotten behind our uh, humble little television show here Sunday nights from 5 until 7 on CW11, Home Track Heroes, bringing the action like what we're seeing right now. 37 laps to go. There is the 51 of Ryan Clark as he's making his way out back up front across the line here, and we'll have 36 to go. The 50 of the Cowboy of John Carlson. Carlson sponsored by the fireplace guy, Hearth and Home which is his own business. He is he, the fireplace he guy. He is the fireplace That's guy. Right. And when he's in a race car, he's still the fireplace guy. <laughs> that, it, it, you know, he does it. And if he should happen to win this, I'm going to guess he'll do the fence climb all the way up to the top of the fence here at Evergreen Seaway. Although the last couple of times he's tried, he's struggled just a little bit. He said age is catching up. And it is. The body's not quite as flexible um, as it once was. But Carlson doing a great job. Chris Curtis right there on that rear bumper you know they fly through that intersection and curtis is one tough hombre when it comes to figure eight racing here at evergreen speedway and i'm really impressed too with how well these cars appear to be handling on this course we had talked pretty much all night long about how of course it's gotten a lot cooler as we're under the lights and the sunshine has not affected the racetrack like it did earlier in the show and earlier in the day but these cars really seem to be stuck to this track well. The cool part for these guys is, given that we have been talking all season long about the lack of tires, I mean, that's been on everyone's mind. These guys finally got some tires. I can only put it, I believe, on the right side or yeah. left side. One it's of the two. It's up to you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Had, they can do whatever they want with them. But this really helped them out, too. So, And these things are traditionally, believe it or not, pretty easy on tires. Well, it's the, the figure eight track, and, and there's... They spin them more than they tear at them and stuff. But right now, Carlson's got a rear view mirror full of Curtis yeah, as they dive through that intersection. Curtis has done a great job of just inching his way in. And that's a good uh, lesson for young drivers. You don't get it all in one lap. You want to look for it a foot at a time, not you know car lengths at time. Right now, well, we got a pass possible for the there lead. There you go, Down boy. Down car, just took that away. And now Chris <laughs> Curtis in the lead. And Bruce Beeler goes around. And that was a Bruce Beeler sandwich. I it think. was, and that one did not. It kind of got spit out, Bruce Beeler did. There you see his 13 car there. But that allowed uh, Chris Curtis, man, what a beautiful, you know, you hear this term a lot too, whatever broadcast you watch on Saturdays or Sundays on the national level about he just kind of used them up right there and used that. 13 cars a pick and, and yeah. did it perfectly. Yeah, John Carlson right now is saying, put a little mustard on it because I didn't like that move <laughs> at all. But that's one of those situations. Even a veteran, as experienced as he is, had to make a decision, yep. in, or, in or out. You know, I'm going to go low, going to go high. And, you know, he saw Beeler in the middle of the racetrack right there. He went high and it ended up costing him the lead. And Curtis is uh, trying to lengthen that thing out right now. 
Uh, Ryan Clark in that 51 car just Isn't doing he? an outstanding job. You can see him right there coming off the corner right there as he flashes down through the intersection. Just been spectacular all day. Let's uh, throw the name of James Conley in that number 98 car out too. He's been having a pretty impressive, uh, just to be able to be able to hang with these guys uh, is pretty impressive. So uh, good job by James Conley in that number eight, 98. Zach Larson, we talked about him at the beginning of, of the race about your, being your points leader, but he's done that with consistency this season too, I think. Well, and it's, he's going to have to watch that thing very carefully because he loses a couple spots. He's not going to be the points leader if that should happen. But right now, Chris Curtis has uh, got a big old smile on his face, and he's thinking about that fat check that he might get to cash <laughs> after tonight. Yeah, it's uh, pretty amazing as the laps are winding down. I The one thing that I was thinking about when you made that comment about, you know, these guys, they don't have a whole lot of time to think. They react. And they, they don't have the luxury of being able to set up a, a guy for a pass. They don't have the, the, the luxury of if I spend more time in this guy's rear view mirror and I look inside or I look outside or I come up and I give him a little tap on the rear. Um, they just they work more off of reaction split second timing. And uh, we saw it there with, with how Pat Clark got the lead, or Pat, or excuse me, Chris Curtis got the lead. Well, on an oval track, you have, you know, a set of turns at one end, set of turns at the other, and those are good places, you know, to set up the pass, make it happen. Here, you've got corners, you know, and then you've got to throw in two intersections on top <laughs> of it. And it's a very short racetrack, flat racetrack, too, so you got to dive through there. And right now, the intersection activity is picking up it really is there's a good shot of our leader the 74 of chris curtis boney brothers racing team like we talked about earlier have been out here forever and really been a huge supporter of the figure eight auto racing club and uh, now that they have two cars out three if you talk about the entry that they put in our stinger eight uh race a couple segments ago uh they're firmly committed to try and keep figure eight racing going here in the pacific northwest well, these cars, oh, <laughs> yeah. that could have changed the whole bunch. You know, these cars, a, a few years back, they made the change, went to this radical car, which I'll tell you is a lot more expensive, A, to build, mm -hmm. maybe not so much to build, but to maintain and everything else. And they've got, as you mentioned, motors that are King Kong killer motors. Um, and, and so you've got to have a good program. Right now, Lapato's car, Lapato's car, excuse me, that zero car just died. Right in right front of the leader. And cost uh, Curtis a whole bunch of the lead he'd built up over the 50 car of John Carlson. Yeah, but the one thing he did, he did the gentlemanly thing to do, and that's he gently pushed her into the infield and went uh, on his way. He, nothing nothing less with Jillian. <laughs> no, you know, I know. On. I know. Good job. In the number 74, Chris Curtis still leading it as we are going to be coming up uh, once they come across the line with 15 laps to go. You see 16 up on the counter. They'll be getting that whittled down here pretty quickly. There comes the Cowboy, the number 50 of John Carlson in position number two. Looks like he's going to try and maybe looks knows how many laps are left to go because I think these guys can use spotters. Some of them do. Uh, so I'm sure John is very aware of how much time he's got left to try and pluck this thing it out. It may be the craziest thing I ever did trying to spot a figure eight race. And <laughs> as I threw it, it sent the car through the intersection and it ripped what you would call the door right off and it flew up in the air. I was laughing so hard that I couldn't help my driver but uh, <laughs> my driver didn't think it was as funny as I did but I, I was up high and dry but and it's a very difficult thing because you go into one corner and the car the competitors on the outside you go to the other end of the racetrack they're on the inside and then what do you do with the intersection you got to yeah. figure it out and that car that's coming the other way is he going to lift or is she going to lift or are they going to drive on through so it is a very very difficult um, type of race to spot they are coming up on 12 laps to go there it is right there still chris curtis still john carlson still ryan clark 
in this uh, 64 lap main event for our Outlaw Figure 8 division here at Evergreen Speedway. Thanks to all of the teams that came out, a lot of them do, like we talked about earlier on these big events for uh, the particular classes. This, along with the 60 Minutes of Fear, which is coming up on October 2nd, Buzz In Steakhouse is presenting the Ed Ritchie 60 Minutes of Fear, pretty much the final big event of the 2021 season here at Evergreen Speedway and uh, these guys, there'll be a ton of cars out there for that. That one will traditionally bring a lot of people in from outside the Pacific Northwest, too. And they're going to end it all with a big old fireworks yeah. show. There's all kinds of other things that are going to happen, classes racing and fireworks. Right now, with 10 laps to go, you know, this is, is a very, very tough race for John Carlson. He's close enough to see him, to smell him, but he can't catch him. He's not been able to run him down. And it's frustrating to be a race car driver who had the lead, uh, you know, down car, didn't do anything wrong. Nope. Driver made the wrong choice basically in that whole thing, moved himself back to second spot. And now he just can't quite close the deal on Chris Curtis in that 74 car. And you know that Chris in the back of his mind is thinking, man, when's the Cowboy gonna get here? When's he gonna get here? I know he's gonna get here. And, and I think, don't quote me, but I think Chris Curtis may have uh, a, somebody in his ear telling him exactly how many car lengths that 50 is behind him. And, and Chris has been doing this a long time. He's got a lot of brains uh, that apply, yeah. and, and he can figure things out pretty quickly as he gets underneath the 13 of Bruce Beeler to put him another lap down coming up on the 25 of Dakota Wilkinson. And you see, I got to give a shout out to the 71 of Holton. He's still hanging in there and just Oops. getting it, uh, getting it close and getting some a lot of good experiences. We are now with five laps to go. Chris Curtis still on his way to what looks like a victory in the figure eight nationals for the outlaw figure eights. You know, he's already starting to think about it and he knows what that pays as the yellow flag comes out due to a stalled car. All right, we'll get them resorted. We've got five laps to go. We'll bring it back up above here. Thank you again for being a big part of Evergreen Speedway and especially our uh, humble little TV show here called Home Track Heroes on CW11. Uh, coming up next week, we'll have segments of the big two-day event called the 2021 version of the Summer Showdown presented by Tire Pros. And uh, then uh, we've got some other events coming up and get on to evergreenspeedway.com and find out everything that's going on out here at the Super Speedway of the West. Okay, they backed it up. We've got six laps to go. Chris Curtis, John Carlson, Ryan Clark, and let's see, Zach Larson. This might be a break for Zach in that 83 car, too. Ricky Dietz still hanging in there in his number 676. Haven't talked about the 33 of uh, Gunderson, but he's been uh, in this one as well. Still see the 25 of Dakota Wilkinson. Mike Colton in the 71 car, or Nick Holton, I'm sorry, in the 71, and uh, James Conley in the 98. So we'll get him fired back up with six to go. This is one of these situations where Curtis, you know, has to pick that line. He, he doesn't want to leave that bottom groove open, but he also can't leave too much on the high side as we see the 51 car of Ryan Clark just getting around the Cowboy right there on that restart because that was an Illinois style restart <laughs> with the leader out front and then they're two by two from there on back. So a great run for Ryan Clark in that 51 car. It's sponsored by Miracles and Memories Academy. There we go. Here he comes out of across the start finish line down into turn number one. The uh, <clears throat> I, I'm really impressed with uh, one of the sponsors on the 74 car of Chris Curtis, and that's Bulldog Haven Northwest, and that's a, a pet rescue group that has been behind Chris and the Boney Brothers for a long time. They really do some cool stuff. So thank you to that group for being a big part of what Chris Curtis is doing and also for what you guys to help bring uh, families and their pets back together and, and doing the right thing as far as uh, dogs are concerned. Okay, here we go, two laps to go. He'll see the white flag. Next time by Chris Curtis in his number 74 entry. Ryan Clark in the 51. The Cowboy, John Carlson, you see him there. The top three out of turn three. They'll come across the line. The white flag will be flying in the air. One more lap to go to wrap up the figure eight nationals. It's Curtis followed by Ryan Clark, John Carlson. Those guys have run up front all night long. And whoever wins this one, it looks like it's going to be Chris Curtis. Um, 
they deserve the positions they've been in. They have just done an outstanding job. As you see, Curtis coming off the corner for the checkered flag. He is the 2021 figure eight nationals champion. And that young lady down at the very bottom, you can bet that she's a big, big fan of Boney Brothers Racing and the burnout of the year, I might add, right here, ladies and gentlemen, as we'll get them up there to the Angel of the Winds winner's platform. Again, thanks to Angel of the Winds for being a big part and presenting what we do here. Congratulations, buddy. Good to see you. Thank you, man. You know, this this means a lot to this team right now. We really needed this. And, you know, Ryan and I went in tonight, you know, and said, told ourselves as long as we're one and two, either qualifying or one and two in the race, that's our weekend right now. And you know what? I got to hand it to that kid right there, 17 years old, and he's kicking ass out here and doing a great job. Yeah. You know what? He's awesome. You know, my dad coming back some, from some medical issues the first time out, me so much to me to be up here tonight and what a night it's been i know this is a big one for you the figure eight nationals the reason why we're all here uh quickly talk about i know you guys have some great sponsors on that car tell us about them oh man y'all tell you we got bulldog haven northwest miracles and memories i know you guys are over here right here thank you very much thermotech powder coating keeps the cars looking beautiful and uh jb blasters and what uh, Oh, yeah, but I got to tell you, I got one more race left in me, you know, this year, and that's really going to be the Indy race. I'm going to go back to the three-hour and do the endurance race. It means so much to this team. We're going to finally do it, knock it off my bucket list. So, you know, we're anxious to do it and go back. Ryan, welcome. Good to have you up here, buddy. Nice race. Oh, that was a, that was a hell of a race. I mean, God, we started, um, I don't even know, third, I think it was. And uh, then it, uh, I think we got third. I can't really recall the whole race. I'm a little uh, lightheaded. Um, yeah, that was a crazy one. We fell back to third. Uh, had a little bit of lap traffic to deal with. And um, I, I was getting a little irritated, used the bumper a little bit, but it wasn't enough. I got to give props to uh, everyone out here, the top three. Um, I couldn't do this without my dad and Chris. They're my biggest mentors, and they uh, help me out with no matter what they what I do. And I couldn't thank them enough, along with the rest of my family, my mom here tonight, um, my stepmom, my sister, everyone here. Just It's awesome to have a full stands again. And uh, seeing everyone here, it's awesome. And um, I couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity I get to do at 17 years old. I'm a figure eight racer at the highest level. So, um, and then I got to thank, you know, my sponsors here, Miracles of Memories Academy, they're here. And uh, I couldn't thank them enough. They're um, amazing. I got Bulldog Haven Northwest, Boney Motorsports, uh, Holton Racing, JB Sandblasters, uh, Thermotech Powder Coating. Uh, and I think there's one more. <laughs> yeah. Bulldog. But Barton's Glass. <laughs> Like I said, I, I can't really recall much right now. I'm, I'm just ready to go party right now. My heart's breaking for you, pal. That was so fun to watch you up front. That thing was just on a tear, and then did something just kind of go away on it? Oh, I probably used up the rear tires running the car hard. It was working really good. New tires. Track was real greasy and slimy, and, you know, lap traffic kind of cost me there a little bit on the outside. And, yeah, that's racing. It was a blast. That was a lot of good intersection. Hope you folks had fun watching that. Yeah, that they did. Talk about who's helping you out on the 50 here this year, John? Uh, you know, really, it's just me and my buddy Tony Hill. He went home earlier today. Yeah, his back's real sore, but uh, it's just me and him working out of the shop. Well, there you have it. That was the 2021 edition of the Figure 8 Nationals here at Evergreen Speedway. A pretty emotional night. A lot of a lot of love in the air for the Allison family. And I got to also mention, for the first time this year, we did a 50-50 raffle, and we were able to uh, present the Allison family with a little bit shy of $1,400. And thanks to the fans that came out to Evergreen Speedway uh, for the Figure 8 Nationals for making that situation a lot better for the and a shout out to the Stinger Rates, man. Those yes. guys, Buzz in Stakeout Stinger Rates, they put on a great show. Looking at the schedule, it just spooked me. It seems like we just got started. There's only a handful of events left before fair time. Once the fair leaves, there's very few after that. So if you want to uh, you know, see some great auto racing, some great entertainment, get on you know, the website, Facebook page, whatever, get out here to Evergreen Speedway because... 
it's going to be over before we know. A lot of stuff coming up. Get on to evergreenspeedway.com to find out everything we have going on. A lot of stuff to get to for the rest of the 2021 season. The best part of it is the fact that we can uh, have you guys come join us for what we do. And, and uh, boy, I tell you, when the drivers get out of the car and they see you guys cheering for them and clapping and carrying on and Yahoo, and it just makes the day so much better. We want to take and thank Bush Beer, Buzz In Steakhouse, First Line Systems, Monroe Grocery Outlet, Tire Pros, and Sparkle Wash for being a part of our show. We'll see you next time on CW11 Home Track Heroes. Thanks for watching Evergreen Speedway's Home Track Heroes on CW11. Join us next week for more great racing from Evergreen Speedway.